And I thank the ranking member, and I, I couldn't agree with uh, you more that the uh, virtual safe havens are a, a threat as well. Uh, I know we had, um, have had hearings on uh, radicalization over the Internet, which is a, uh, I think poses one of the biggest threats we have today. Uh, other members are reminded that opening statements may be submitted for the record. We are pleased to have a very distinguished panel of witnesses before us uh, today on this important topic, and I want to introduce uh, each of you. Uh, I hope we can get through your testimony. We have a, a series of votes coming up probably in about uh, 30 minutes from now. It will be two votes, and then we will return to the hearing. Um, first, we have um, Ms. Uh, Jackie Williams Bridgers, who is the Managing Director of the International Affairs and trade team for the U.S. Government Accountability Office. Uh, she began her uh, professional career in the GAO in 1978. Ms. Uh, Williams Bridgers has also been the Inspector General of the U.S. Department of State and the U.S. Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. It is a pleasure to have you uh, here today. Uh, next, we have Ms., uh, Mr. Mark uh, Commons, who is the Deputy Assistant Secretary for International Affairs at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. He is responsible for coordinating the Department's international programs and policies. Prior to joining DHS, he served in the U.S. Foreign Service, concentrating on counterterrorism and security issues. And it is an honor to have you here today as well, sir. Uh, next, we have Ms. Shari Villarosa, is the Deputy Coordinator for Regional Affairs at the U.S. Department of State. Previously, she, she served as Chief of Mission in Burma, and her expansive Foreign Service career has included overseas assignments in Thailand, Brazil, and Ecuador, among others. Next, we have Mr. James Roberts, served as a Principal Director for Special Operations and Combating Terrorism in the Office of Secretary of Defense. Mr. Roberts began his government career as a U.S. Army private in 1968 and served 24 years on active duty as a military intelligence uh, officer. Let me thank you for your service uh, to our country and thank all of you for being here uh, today. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Roberts. And let me, too, uh, uh, associate myself with your remarks regarding the uh, Navy SEAL operation to uh, kill bin Laden. Um, no one will ever know the names or the faces, uh, but they are truly the unsung heroes. Um, and in addition, I would like to also commend and recognize the intelligence community and the analysts uh, who were able to track down the information that led us to bin Laden, uh, they too will, will never know their names or faces, um, the public at least, and, um, but they deserve our uh, congratulations as well. Uh, with that, uh, Ms. Uh, Williams Bridgers, the GAO came out with a, uh, your uh, report. And I want to go through some of the uh, conclusions uh, with you and um, assess how that, how that uh, impacts our ability to go after uh, these terrorists in the safe havens. Uh, but essentially, as I understand it, um, your report concludes that the uh, State Department uh, did not fully comply with the level of detail required by two laws, two statutes, one being the National Defense Authorization Act, and the second one being the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act. Uh, these acts require the President to submit to the Congress a report on the strategy and activities of the U.S. government to eliminate terrorist sanctuaries. Uh, <clears throat> can you tell me or tell this committee where, uh, how these reports were uh, deficient? and what impact that will have on our ability to hunt down the terrorists in the safe havens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question. I would be glad to respond. Um, with regard to the report that was mandated by the National Defense Authorization Act that required the President um, to complete an overall assessment of U.S. government-wide efforts to address terrorist safe havens, um, that report has not yet been completed. We understand the responsibility has been delegated to the National Security Council. In our conversations during the course of our review, the National Security Council says they are in the process of developing that report. Uh, so we are looking forward to receiving it and uh, having an examination of it. We think it's critically important for there be to be a high-level uh, national statement of the priorities, the goals, the objectives, and hopefully we will see the level of detail 
in that assessment that will afford the Congress the opportunity to measure over time progress being made. Uh, with regard to the Intelligence Reform and Terrorist Prevention Act, it specifically mandated that State Department produce reports on an annual basis that rendered country by country assessments, those countries that had been identified as terrorist safe havens, and then to assess uh, these countries in terms of the actions the countries have taken uh, to prevent terrorism, actions that um, the countries have demonstrated as being cooperative with the United States, and to explain the level of knowledge that exists within these governments about terrorist activity or, say, or the uh, uh, presence of safe havens in their countries. The one provision that Congress recommended that we did not see in any of the country reports related to the provision that would require State Department to report on actions taken by countries to prevent uh, the proliferation and trafficking of weapons of mass destruction. This was absent in every single country report. Uh, to state's credit during the course of our review, they acknowledged that that provision had not been adequately responded to and they intended to incorporate in their next report, which we expect to be issued sometime this year. Words, uh, your testimony indicates it, and your report that you issued, um, uh, that these, these reports are incomplete. Correct. And are not in, in compliance with the requirements. Uh, under these two statutes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in, in addition, sir, I would also add that in the assessments, what we expected to see, and not what I believe Congress expected to see in its articulation of its need to have a full assessment of information on which it could provide um, adequate oversight, we expected to see a listing of all activities undertaken by the whole of the U.S. government, all agencies that have a presence and a contribute in a relevant and significant way toward the detection and elimination of terrorist safe havens. That assessment was complete. <coughs> that listing of all other agencies, activities, and programs was not uh, clear and it was not complete. In the course of our own review, we identified at least 13 programs that are funded by State Department that we consider to be most relevant programs that speak to governance, capacity building, security, um, economic development activities, this whole of government approach that was articulated in the most recent national strategic statement. Um, we also did not see the listing of other agencies, not all other agencies, programs and activities, such as DHS. As I mentioned in my opening statement, uh, activities that DHS um, advances with regard to cash smuggling that leads to money laundering, that leads to financing of uh, terrorist groups and operations. That too was not included in the uh, state country reports. So it, it, the lack of reporting by the National Security Council, which they assured you that they will be uh, coming out with a report soon? Yes. <clears throat> but coupled with the uh, deficiencies in this report by both DHS and the State Department, uh, is not allowing Congress to do its oversight responsibility. Is that correct? I believe it does not provide Congress with sufficient detail and explanation and evaluation that allows you to measure over time what progress has been made. For example, the removal of Indonesia from the country report. It took some digging for our team to look over time to see what countries were in, what countries were out. There's no explicit statement in any country, the most current country report, that a country had been removed or the Afghan-Pakistan border area had been removed. That took some uh, concerted effort uh, and examining and data mining, if you will, of each of the country reports over time. That kind of information needs to be provided in order to give you a sense of progress or lack thereof. And, and so there, as I understand, there are no metrics reported. Is that correct? That's correct. So the, this committee, Foreign Affairs, Armed Services, uh, the Intelligence Committee, cannot adequately perform its job without this information. It cannot adequately perform the job without this information. This information is not currently available in open sources. However, it may be available in classified environment, and it is, might be most appropriate in a classified reporting environment. Um, the Congress did allow State Department to provide it that type of more sensitive information in a classified report. State Department has chosen not to issue that type of report. I would like to give, uh, obviously, the State Department, Ms. Bill Rosa and, and Mr. Uh, Commons, uh, 
would like to give you the opportunity to respond to uh, the allegations in this report. Uh, we'll start with Ms. Uh, Villarosa. Thank you, Chairman. Um, again, we took to heart, we've, we have talked with the GAO about the, uh, the deficiencies in our country reports of terrorism and are in the process of finalizing the 2010 version to make them more, to be, make them more comprehensive as, as the uh, GAO has recommended. And this will include specifically addressing efforts uh, that are done with regard to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. We're working with uh, the Bureau of ISN, International Security and Nonproliferation Affairs, to provide that information so that it is as comprehensive as possible. Okay. I mean, tracking the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction seems to be a pretty serious uh, uh, thing that we should be uh, reporting. Uh, why was that not included? Uh, again, I know that this is this our Bureau of International Security and Nonproliferation uh, tracks this very closely, and it uh, I do not know in terms of what their reporting requirements are, but we we understand that we need to include this information in the country reports of terrorism and our in the process of doing so now. Well, I would certainly hope so. I mean, it, you know, that seems to be a major oversight uh, in the reporting requirement that is by law, and it, it, uh, it, it I think it, it harms our ability in the Congress as chairman of the Oversight and Investigations Committee on Homeland Security. It, it, it uh, does not allow us to do our job. So I would hope that, that this uh, report be updated as soon as possible. Uh, I want to commend the GAO for calling this to our attention. I don't think many people knew about that, certainly uh, either on this committee or in the Congress as a whole. And I think that's a, a major uh, gap uh, in the reporting requirement. And Mr. Commons, do you have any, um, any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I come at this question from uh, the point of view of having uh, been a Foreign Service officer, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, uh, for a number of, uh, for, for 17 years before I uh, came to Homeland Security. And perhaps uh, similarly to uh, Ms. Villarosa, uh, was posted overseas during times when I had to write the first draft of the, of, of the uh, counterterrorism uh, country reports uh, that are then submitted back to Washington and, uh, and, and further uh, amplified by the Washington uh, interagency community. And I know that the State Department sends specific instructions with respect to uh, legal changes that, uh, that, uh, that took place in the country at that time, significant prosecutions, et cetera. Um, and uh, from, from our point of view, absolutely, if, uh, if um, uh, the training that, uh, that ICE and CBP have done with respect to uh, bulk cash smuggling, if that, is, uh, if that should be included, we've, we're, we report that through other channels. We're more than happy to, uh, to include that, absolutely. And it's June of 2011. This is a 2010 report. I would hope that, uh, that both DHS and State can update this report so uh, that uh, the other branch of government that being the Congress can do its job in 